Today, we're going to be talking about how to add memory to our large language models. By their nature, LLMs are stateless, which means that it does not remember any of the previous conversations that you had. This is especially true when you are working with these large language models through an API. Let's look at a quick example. So in this case, we are installing LangChain and OpenAI, and we are setting up our OpenAI API key. For this specific example, I am using an OpenAI, OpenAI's model. However, this will work with any of the large language models. And that means you can replace uh, this LLM with any of the open source models. So first, we add an instance of a chat OpenAI with the temperature uh, set to zero so that the model doesn't hallucinate. So let's see if it can remember something. So the first uh, prompt that I provided said, remember, hi, remember, the secret word is a cat. Now, this is using ChatGPT in the background to the API. So it says, thanks for reminding me, but uh, as an AI language model, I don't have the ability to forget or remember things like human do. However, I'll keep in mind that cat is the secret word for any future interactions. Now, just to test it, I provided another prompt. What is the capital of France? And it says capital of France is Paris. Keep in mind, this is ChatGPT. Next, I'm simply testing it. What is the secret word? And it says, I'm sorry, as, a large, as an AI language model, I don't have access to any secret words. Can you please provide more context or information? So it means that it doesn't have any memory of our previous conversations. Uh, for the rest of the video, I will show you how you can add memory to these models. The idea is going to be very simple. Uh, for every input, in order to remember things, we will provide a history of our previous conversations that will constitute the memory for our large language model. In this video, we are going to be looking at four different types of memories that are supported within LangChain. Each one of them has their own specific use case, and we, will, we are going to go into a lot of details to discuss those. The first type of memory that we are going to be looking at is called conversation buffer memory. Now, in order to add memory to our LLM, we are going to be using a conversation chain within LangChain. So here we are again importing the chat OpenAI model, then the conversation chain and uh, the conversation buffer memory. So first, again, we create our LLM, or we instantiated our memory object. And for the conversation chain, we are assigning LLM as well as the memory and then we are setting verbose to true. So we want to see a step-by-step -step information to be displayed. So I'm going to be using the same example as I had before. And in this case, uh, we are using the conversation chain and then uh, calling the predict function on top of it. And you have to provide this input variable. So let's run this and see what happens. So we actually see the internal working uh, of the chain. The first line, is actually the system prompt. Prompt is, the following is a friendly conversation between a human and an AI. The AI is talkative and provides lots of specific details from the context. And if the AI doesn't know the answer to a question, it truthfully says it does not know. The next two line shows the conversation between the human and the AI. So in this case, our prompt was, hi, remember the secret word is cat. And the AI responded, hello, of course, I have stored the secret word cat in my memory. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Next, I provided the prompt, um, what is the capital of France? And it came up with the answer. And it also actually added some more details. However, we are interested in this part. Now you see uh, that in the current conversation, it actually stored the previous conversations as well. So this is the initial prompt a corresponding answer, then the second prompt that we simply provided here, and then here is the response uh, from ChatGPT. Basically, um, the conversation buffer memory simply keeps track of all the previous conversations until you hit the token limit of your LLM. Now, if I ask the model what is the secret word, based on its memory, it should be able to uh, respond. And it says, in this case, the secret word is cat, as you mentioned earlier. Is there anything else I can help you with? Now, in general, a conversation buffer memory is the simplest form of memory that you can add to your model. And it will remember all the previous conversation 
within the context window of your LLM. If there is an overflow, it will start cropping the earlier conversation and then uh, simply add on, on top of it. So before uh, looking at the other types of memories, I want to show you uh, some operations that you can perform on the um, memory object. So in this case, uh, it has a field called buffer, which actually stores all the previous conversations. So here is a well-formatted form. Like you see, this is the contacts um, that it's uh, keeping track of. You can also get the same information in the form of a dictionary. Uh, so you're going to be accessing the load memory variables and you pass in an empty dictionary. And the uh, result is a dictionary with a key history and then all uh, the previous conversations that it uh, had so far. Uh, you can also directly add things to the memory without chatting with the uh, chatbot. So the way that we do it is we're going to be calling this save uh, context function and then you pass on a dictionary. So in this case, we're going to be providing an input dictionary, which has the prompt, and an output dictionary, which has the response from the model. So you can actually build this context by itself well, without even talking to your uh, uh, LLM, right? And let's look at what the uh, buffer is going to say. Uh, we have added this to the memory buffer. Now, just to summarize, uh, this sort of memory is very helpful when you want to keep a detailed track of all the conversations that have happened so far. You just need to be uh, careful about a token limit of your LLM. The second type of memory that we are going to be looking at is called conversation buffer window memory. It's a short-term memory. Now, rather than looking at all the previous conversations, in this case, we just want to look at a few of them. So, uh, in order to use this kind of memory, well, we're going to load a conversation buffer window memory object from Langchain, and then we define K. So K determines how many previous conversations it's supposed to remember. So in this case, if you set it to K equal to one, so it will remember only the last conversation. Okay, so let's walk through a few examples. Uh, in this case, I'm defining the memory object again, so when I checked it, there is nothing in the memory because we are just uh, starting the conversation with our chatbot. Now, again, we um, are using the same example uh, and it, the response is, yes, of course, I have stored the secret root cat in my memory. Okay, my next prompt is, remember, today is June 4th, 2023. And uh, the response is, thank you for letting me know. I have updated my internal clock to reflect the current date of June 4th, right? Now, in terms of the conversation memory, it has the last two conversations in the memory. Now, now let's see what happens when we give it another prompt. Now, I'm going to ask it, what is the secret word? Uh, keep in mind the, that we set k equal to 1, so it's going to just keep track of the last conversation. And let's see what the response is. Um, you see, it says, I'm sorry, but I do not have any information about the secret word, right? Uh, and if you look at the current conversation, so it has uh, just the last two conversations, including the one that we just had. Okay, so when do you use this type of memory? Well, this is helpful uh, when you want to uh, remember the most rec recent conversations rather than everything that has happened so far. And this will also help you in keeping um, the usage under the token limit. The next type of memory we're going to be looking at is called conversation token buffer memory. Now, as you can probably predict, this will uh, keep a certain number of tokens in the memory. And this is important because if you're making API calls to OpenAI, you are being charged for the number of tokens that you are sending or receiving. So it's a really great option to limit the number of tokens that you want to use. Uh, the way we define the memory is a little different. In this case, the conversation token and buffer memory takes in LLM as an input along with the max token limit. The reason for that is that different LLMs have different tokenization processes and the way they count the number of tokens is different. That's why you need to provide the uh, LLM that you want to use to determine uh, the tokenization process. 
and hence the number of tokens. And the second parameter defines how many tokens you want to keep in memory. So let's start with the max token limit of 500. So this is a pretty large uh, token limit and that's why it should remember some of the conversations. So again, we are running our normal uh, prompt and here's the response. And now if you try to access the memory variable, we see in history, you have the human um, prompt as well as the AI response. Now I decrease the max token limit to 70 and here is what happened. So we ran it through the first prompt, it got a response, then we ran it to a second prompt. In this case, you see uh, that it has both the prompts and the track of it. However, when we actually access the in history, since we have a limit of 70 tokens only, it simply kept uh, the AI response and it discarded uh, the human uh, prompt as well as the pre previous conversation between human and AI. Again, if you are worried about the cost, uh, this is a really good uh, way of uh, keeping it under control. The last type of memory that we will look at is called conversation summary memory. Here is how you define it. So we are loading conversation summary memory buffer uh, from uh, memory within LangChain. And then in terms of definition, it's very similar to when we looked at the token buffer memory. So you need to pass on the LLM that you're using along with the maximum token limit. So whatever information you provide, it will summarize it within um, 100 tokens and keep it in the buffer memory. Now, just to demonstrate an example, I asked ChatGPT to write a small story about a de detective. And here is what, uh, what it came up with. Then what I did was I directly stored this uh, in the context of the memory. So the input is going to be write a crime story and the, we are going to store this uh, as a part of the output. Since we are using the conversation summary buffer memory and we have a token limit of 100 tokens, so what's going to end up happening is that instead of the story, it will calculate or compute the summary uh, of all this text and store that instead. So now if we look at uh, the memory variables, so you see uh, there is a history and here is the response from the system. Uh, so the this is essentially the summary of the story as well as the input prompt. Now uh, if you want to uh, converse with this LLM, so we can create a conversation chain. Uh, so here's the conversation chain. So if we ask a question uh, like what artifact was stolen, so now based on the summary, it will generate a response. So let's see what it can come up with. And you see, you know, it, it can um, actually accurately deduce that it was a 17th century portrait. After that response, I wanted to look at the uh, memory again, and you will notice something uh, that apart from the summary that uh, it had, it also, uh, posted the previous conversation. Now, by default, it's not uh, directly summarizing the last conversation, but simply appending it uh, to the memory. But if we ask another question, then the results are going to be very different. So I asked it, so t tell me about the capital of France, and here's the response that it came up with. Now, look at the here. Um, the first conversation that we had, or the, the story that we loaded in the memory itself, so it's keeping the summary of that. And then there were uh, uh, like the next conversation, right? However, if you, if you look at the uh, memory again, so now it actually summarized even the previous prompt. So the newest prompt is going to be appended as long as you don't uh, hit the token limit. But everything before the most recent prompt is going to be summarized and that's why uh, it added the summary the artifact stolen was a 17th century portrait from uh, a city art gallery now this mem this type of memory is helpful when you want to keep track of all your previous conversation and just give a summary to your model as a context uh, there are some other types of memories as well but these four are the ones that are most commonly used i just want to reiterate that uh, these different types of memories 
can be used with any type of LLM, including all the open source LLMs that Langchain supports. In the subsequent videos, I will show you how to build applications with memory. If you're looking to build applications based on large language models and want to explore its visibility, I do offer consulting services. Check out the description of the video for more details. We do have a Discord server with a growing community, so please come join us. If you found the information in this video useful, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I will be making a lot more content on Langchain and other platforms for large language models. So make sure you push that bell notification button so you don't miss out on any of the videos. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.